And uh, we've had a really good show. The last time we were here, we had an extraordinary conversation with our next guest, uh, who is uh, Vince Thompson, the CEO of Melt, uh, an Atlanta-based uh, sports marketing uh, firm that uh, has uh, really been a trailblazer in this country. And, 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 and Vince, you've been at the vanguard of this uh, naming and licensing uh, conversation. And uh, at the time, I think our last conversation had not been resolved. Um, still not sure it's resolved. But, it's, it, but we're it's, closer. It's, it's still evolving. The, uh, the, the NCA certainly took a little air out of the balloon, but I'm not sure there's any resolution, uh, and certainly not any resolution uh, with, uh, with Tua's name and image and likeness as well. I'm glad you brought that up. I was talking to some people the other day in New York, and the idea that, that, that had Tua, had, had this, it, it, we turn the clock back for the sake of argument, and two years ago, Tua throws the walk-off second in 26 at the, at, at the Mercedes Dome. What kind of money could he have made? Well, the short answer is lots. <laughs> Uh, because you've got this quintessential kid, uh, incredible story, incredible heart, incredible family, mm -hmm. comes uh, to the mainland uh, from Hawaii, incredible sportsman. And, and by the way, you forget the story with him and Jalen at the time as well. Right. So he throws the walk-off bomb, uh, you know, millions, because then he would have been on the cover of EA, NCA the next year. Right. The image and likeness, and not to mention he's got one of the greatest, most marketable names of all time. But let's talk about going forward, the business impact of Tua. Does he come back to Alabama? Does he go to the NFL? Is he a, a reclamation project, third or fourth round? It could be 30, 40, 50, 100 million dollars at stake. Yeah, let's talk about that because um, everyone gets hung up on on first round money, which is not great. No. Uh, it's the, but let's, but to it to me, and this is where you're, you are the expert. The, it seems like he could be such a marketable person. And I wonder even more so now if he comes back and is successful. Oh, totally not. I mean, if you look at the amount of sympathy that, 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 that he received across the nation Amazing. and you look at how he handled this and you look at how he's handled everything all the adversity right. even back to the the Jalen I would tell you that he's going to be one of the most marketable NFL players to come out probably since maybe Peyton wow um Far beyond Baker, far beyond Kyler. So are we going to see uh, Tua and, and Brad Paisley on those nationwide commercials now? You, you uh, well, yeah, well, you might. <laughs> and uh, but he's just he fits a lot of really really good profiles. I mean, you look at Zion, uh, you look at LeBron. Um, you don't, you know, not many, you know, solo baseball players. But but I, if I were his, uh, depending on the outcome of his recovery, if I were his, you know, running his marketing, I'd say. Look seriously at um, coming back to the University of Alabama really? for lots of reasons. Not to least mention the fact that uh, you know your teammates at the SEC have some new television things going on. I've read about that as well. Um, it means what it, it like means. A lot is in the media these days. There's a lot in the media. CBS is and their rights are in play uh, right now. They're paying around fifty million dollars annually. My estimation is that'll go up to five hundred million. Which me and me. By the way, don't forget you and I talked about these numbers before the SEC network in the billions, and we were two to five billion. This one will probably be a 20-year, 10 billion dollar contract, in in my estimation. And it may be CBS, it may be the mothership Disney, it may be Fox, and it may be an outlier like a Tim Cook or a Mark Zuckerberg. Man. Now you're talking my language. So that bodes well. Live sports is still the greatest destination for eyeballs. So how, how, I mean, listen, you, you, you just alluded to uh, two companies that no one has, has really ever conventionally thought about uh, in, in terms of Apple and, and, and Facebook. And there are, are, there are many. I mean, that, that is where the growth is right now in sports, is it not? It's massive. I mean, look, Amazon can, can pay anything they want. Yeah. Apple can pay anything they want. Facebook can pay anything they want. And you're forgetting, too, that, the, that, that also with Disney coming out with Disney Plus and ESPN Plus and these giant over-the-top streaming platforms, you're looking at, at reach to two, three, four billion people, not 100 million households that really? have cable television. Okay. So that's why live sports. Now, here's another thing. 
how much of a financial impact will the twilight of Nick Saban's career have on the value of the next SEC television deal? I'm going to guess that uh, somebody is, is saying to Nick Saban, we, uh, we need you to stay. I'd say that more than one person is saying to Nick, <laughs> I need to stay. And, 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 and arguably, I've run numbers that Nick is probably 30 to 40 percent of the value of the existing SEC broadcast agreements now. So there's a lot of incentive for hmm. a lot of us. Uh, for him to say, for for him to stay, and I would say I went to Auburn. It, it it pains me sometimes to say that, but you know, even with what's going on. But you're driven by the dollar, so we understand. Yeah, well, yeah, my school color's green, right? So, uh, but uh, but so it's going to be. We got we live in fascinating times with what's going on and uh, and how that intersects with name, image, and likeness. How that intersects with a, a new SEC deal. How that intersects with uh, Tua's recovery, Saban's retirement. Um, there is a lot of unbelievable. I want to go back to Tua. Because uh, uh, I've made this argument against, but I, I, I must tell you, I've never thought about what you're talking about. So, if you had, to, if if I could sit you down and tour, uh, by the way, ride back in uh, Tuscaloosa today. He's there to support his teammates tomorrow on Senior Day. Mm -hmm. If you if you were to sit down with him and say, Tua, this is why you should stay in school one more year. What would your most salient argument be? Well, there's, a, there's several of them. First of all is, is that the, the, the recovery and the pace of the recovery is going to drive a lot of that. Okay. Because, you know, the, there is a big gap from being a first rounder to the, the third and fourth rounder. Of course. That'll, that'll drive uh, the, a lot of the um, discussion. If the recovery is not on the pace, I would say, hey, we don't have a lot to lose by coming back. Okay. It's a great sympathy story. You know, Alabama's got had a ton of injuries this year. They'll reload. Uh, oh, don't don't forget, we've got a hundred million dollar stadium expansion going on in Alabama as well. But, so, but two is still not profiting from any of that. No, he's not unless we're able to get you know some modifications in the name, image, and likeness. That's why it's really such a dynamic issue now if you look at the if you look at the intersection of all of these issues and we're, we're kind of picking on Alabama obviously there's a lot of other there's sure. a lot of bigger institutions but this seems to be sort of the perfect storm and the perfect timing to create the perfect storm it's a lot to chew on there but I think it's probably you know it, it, it means that SEC football and it means college football is very alive and well and uh, is probably not going to go anywhere anytime soon. If you stack the, our ratings up against, say, the NBA, the LSU Alabama game had the highest number that, that, that CBS has had in eight years. Hmm. And millions and millions of viewers. And so that tells you, it was an afternoon game still. And it was an afternoon game, yeah. and so what, so. what would that game have done in prime time? It would, have done, it would have done north of 20 million viewers, mm. 20 to 25 million. And you think about, you know, the Super Bowl gets, you know, a couple hundred million. Yeah, just just for an example, the the Fox game last night I think did about 13. They, that, that's a uh, Monday night, Thursday night, 12 to 15 million is pretty average, right? Right. Now, they, now, now we'll say the game Sunday between the uh, the Patriots and the and the Cowboys will will break the bank, will it not? Oh, it'll, it'll 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 be it'll be near. It won't be near uh, Super Bowl, but it certainly will be near playoff and conference yeah. championship. That's the biggest game of the year in, college, in pro football. The biggest game of the year. The the, the thing about the, the the health of college football, and we and you and I keep coming back to this. And obviously, there's legal betting now. There's fantasy. There's going to be EA is going to come back, but it's evergreen and it's passion. The interesting phenomenon now about the venues is now there's an arms race to improve the venues. Right. Look at what's here. Look at what's at Alabama. But when I was in Auburn last weekend, the other phenomenon is a lot of people are actually staying outside and watching the game while the game's going on in the stadium. So that's a whole nother, there were thousands of people. I had a guy in our studio uh, Wednesday in New York who's uh, the head of sports for Twitter. Georgia graduate. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about all this. And it, it was mind-blowing. And none of this would be surprising because you've been in these conversations. But, I mean, but it, people at home and in their cars just don't realize what's going on. Truly, they don't. And then, like I said, it was we left the game a little early, and there must have been at least 10,000 people. To the sophistication of the tailgate experience, you can get these mobile satellites, you, you're sitting in a comfortable chair, you're switching channels. Now why are people doing that? 
I think it's more, you know, football now, uh, the tailgating is, is the evolution of the tailgating is more of a social occasion. You go inside the stadium, maybe somebody's standing in front of you, you can't get a cold beer. I mean, right. those types of things. So the balance and the evolution, I, I had uh, lunch today with uh, Ross Bjork, the uh, athletic director of Texas A&M, and you know what they've done at Cal Field. Oh, amazing. I mean, it's, 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 it's but you, when you looked at Greg Burns' announcement, the Alabama AD, about what they were evolving the Alabama stadium, they were comparing it to Jerry's World and Mercedes Benz. So, the 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 wake up call is 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 rippling through college athletic directors with the venue, and that's why I see I think you'll see a younger group of ads: Alan Green, Greg Byrne, Ross Bjork, um, Carter at Ole Miss. They understand the nuance of the social media culture and the technology culture and the name, image, and likeness culture better, and I think you'll see a sea shift over the next few months. And it, college football won't look like it does in five years, anything like today. Nobody better uh, on, on the cutting edge of, of where, where sports is going than uh, our guest, Vince Thompson, the president and CEO and founder of Melt. Uh, Come back soon, Vince. This is an extraordinary conversation. Thank you, Paul. Vince Thompson joining us. Uh, Kirby Smart is 15 minutes away. Uh, I hope you will uh, 